I'm here at the studio of Roberto Juarez to get a behind the scenes look at the pineapples and pigs featured in his current work. Let's go. I'm a painter, a printmaker, an artist. I make large scale paintings for public buildings. I paint in my studio for exhibitions and galleries. I keep everything <laughs> and make collages out of them and use them as source materials for a larger painting. So little to big is I think the thing I love doing. So Matt, these are the collages I make in my studio almost daily. And from this little collage that was made in 2018, I made this painting a couple days ago that is one of the newest works in the room. So you can see how the design of this collage gets translated to a larger picture. I always knew I was gonna be an artist, even as a child. In fact, as a child, I would draw constantly and my parents didn't really support it. There wasn't a lot of art in the house, so I figured out that if I drew under tables and under chairs, no one would find them. And so that's where it was my secret place to draw and paint. In seventh grade, I was taken to the Art Institute for the first time in Chicago. Mrs. Sundale, my art teacher, took us to see Van Gogh paintings, and it changed my life. I was, you know, this little kid, but I knew that that was the important thing, the thing that I cared about. I'm painting these paintings that I call in my grandmother's front yard because of this, these images of the pineapple and the pig, once I printed them on Chinese paper, I started remembering the first time I saw her front yard. And I was probably 12, had never left Chicago, and there was a gigantic pig tied to a mango tree in the front yard of my grandmother. And her kitchen was on the porch, so she would cook outside. And um, it was just a different world. It opened my whole idea of who I was and what, you know, what could be out there. As a kid, I, I, it's a fond memory, it's a warm memory. And so once I saw this, I thought, okay, I'm here, I'm gonna be playing in my grandmother's backyard, or front yard, so to speak. And um, there, that gave me an extra uh, kind of joy of working. So what I do is I print on the Chinese paper these images and gather them and, and give them a different scraffito and different textures. This is a horse brush for like brushing horses and it was given to me as a gift and I never knew what to use it for because it's kind of too coarse for the kind of marks I make on canvas, but it's perfect for printing. I'll show you. And then I start painting on the underpainting. Underpaintings are made, um, in my process, by collaging, small collages. And that's how I work out the dynamic of what I want to say visually. And once I have that, I blow it up. And then on top of that, I started adhering these pigs and pineapple. And then what happens in that interface, I respond to with my own painting, or my own tearing, my own drawing on top of it, so that it becomes one. I also do public work. I do gigantic murals for mostly courthouses. I did a federal courthouse in Fort Pierce, Florida. We're in the room where it was painted. And it is a 20 foot tall by 10 foot stretched piece of linen. They were kind of surreal in a sense because there were flowers from above ground all underwater and there were um, microscopic kind of life living with these flowers. And um, there were two sides to this gigantic entryway. One side was uh, nature, and that was the painting you saw as you left because it helped kind of bring you back into the world. And on the other side of the wall, as you approached or entered the building, you saw this kind of more abstract idea of culture. So it was culture, culture and nature together. To be able to be given a piece of architecture like the courthouse and say what and how could art affect this space. And part of it is the psychology of space, what is happening with the people who enter the space. And that's the challenge. Grand Central Station was the perfect example of that. 
It was a pivotal or important point in my career because I was a young artist. I was competing with like these big names for this very kind of sought after commission. And uh, there was a, a tie, so to speak, and they couldn't decide between me and this other artist. And um, somebody, a friend of mine who's a prominent artist, came in and said, give the kid a chance. <laughs> and they did. It's about kind of comforting, cloistering the passengers, the, the travelers in this smaller room inside of this cathedral of travel, which is Grand Central, which I love. It was historic and, and it's still there. In this latest work, which is in the room right now, there's a lot of vibrant color. And I think that's a, a need for some kind of excitement and joy that I wasn't feeling from the outside world right now. The pandemic has been a little hard on me. Uh, it took me a uh, work to start to work again. And once I started to work, I didn't want to be dreadful in what I was saying or doing. I wanted to um, enjoy my life again and not worry about living or dying or, or you know the politics of the moment. I really wanted to create a, an, like an oasis or a place that I could go that had these feelings from my past. And so I think the colors speak to that. They're very bright. There's not a lot of pastels or soft tones. They're uh, very uh, graphic and uh, not pop, but almost pop. I, I often wonder, what do people do who don't do art? I mean, it's like, it's so part of my everyday. It gives me life, and I love sharing what I can share in art. I mean, that's part of the whole process, not just the making, it's wonderful. But when you put it out in the world, like what we have in Pittsfield now, people respond, and it's something they want to see right now, and it makes me feel like I have a purpose, which I do. I mean, I think it's real. It's a real purpose.